Um, so next we're going to welcome Josh to the stage, uh, Josh from Unity. Big round of applause for Josh. Please, everyone. Thank you. because that's my job, uh, talk about VR and AR in non-games. So everybody knows Unity as a game engine, and it also means a lot of people are scared by the term game engine, and they don't want to use it for their product or their service or their experience, because they're not games. So they think, oh, no, this is supposed to be for games, so we're not going to use it. So hey, I'm Josh. I'm a technical evangelist for Unity, and it's not what you think. So it's part of my role to, to promote the Unity Game Engine, show people how to use certain features, deliver training, visit users all around, all around Europe, and generally just talk about our amazing Unity. Uh, some of you may have realised I am not like you Southerners. <laughs> and yeah, so I get this piece taken out of me quite a lot, really. Uh, not a lot of people can understand what I'm saying. So like when I say goats and grass and talk and stuff like that. But I try to speak as very clearly as possible when I'm down here. So yeah, it's 2016 and it's the year VR. But it's November, so you have to be really quick. And it's beautiful, right? It's amazing. And what I think, I think it is the year of VR because I think consumers and, and general people walking in the street know what VR is now. Like I'll take a headset home, my housemate was a physio. She goes, oh, you've got you know, those goggle things. And she actually knows what it is. And they get actually people who are understanding the term what VR and AR mean, like the things like Pokemon Go. But yeah, I'm here today to talk about creators. Because there's one true creator, because I'm an evangelist. So. <laughs> so creators make amazing products, and people, creators, use Unity. But then, like, we look at different industries that can use VR, such as architecture, uh, production, like uh, automotive. Advertising, to show people's products and uh, film, movies, education, uh, research, and entertainment. So these are the kind of people that are using uh, VR as, as kind of like a product and, and something to, to expand what they do already. But the problem is that these people are using software developers. You can see this guy's a software developer, he's got code on his screen, he's wearing a shirt, and his desk is nice and tidy. <laughs> But the thing with software, the thing with software developers, is that software just solves problems. People create software to solve a problem. It serves a purpose. And most software developers just know, hey, I've got this problem, I'm going to solve it with software. But that's not what experience is, and that's not what VR and games and what people are trying to give their users. They're not trying to give them a solution to something. They just want to give them some entertainment or um, something like that. So I'm going to turn to this guy instead. You can tell he's a game developer because he's got his cap on backwards. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a really messy, messy desk. He's got two keyboards and two mics. So this guy's a cool guy. <laughs> he knows how to make cool experiences. But if we actually look what software a, a games team is made up of, it's made up of so many disciplines. It's made up of producers and artists and animators and texturers and programmers and testers, not what you get in a normal software company. And these people, these people, it's their life livelihood to, to create entertainment. Like film and movies and audio and music. Like they're there to create these kind of experiences for users. Pure entertainment. Because this is the best way to, to share experiences with friends and other people, right? So game developers use Unity. Who knows what Unity is? 
Okay, and who and how do these people actually use Unity on a daily basis? Okay, so maybe twenty percent, and about half know it is. So Unity is the most used game engine in the world. It's really easy to use uh, products, and so many people use it because of its workflows. But one of the main reasons that people use it is because it's cross-platform. So we currently support 24 platforms. Uh, iOS, Android, all consoles, <coughs> PC, Mac, Linux, as well as all of the VR platforms, Oculus, Vive, PVR, Daydream, Android, Google. So that's why people use Unity. So if we look at the numbers, we've got 5.5 million developers actively using Unity right now. That's 5.5 million people that could be creating these VR experiences for companies in advertising and automotive. And we've had such a commitment to VR in the long run. If you look at three years ago when the Oculus Kickstarter happened, David Hellickson, our founder, featured there with many other industry leaders. We had the Oculus SDK inspiration, Unity 4, and we gave Unity, uh, Unity Pro out to all Oculus developers at the time. And then we also included the Google Cardboard SDK. Just this year, three years later, we had the Vision Summit, which is a cross-industry VR conference. Uh, we've got native HMD integration for those four platforms. And we're improving our rendering uh, pipeline improvements, all for VR. And then just the future, we've got a new input system, again, rendering techniques, cross-platform improvements, uh, a VR editor, so you can actually build your environment whilst in VR, and you can see the sizes and the scale and where things are, and you can move them around with your controller. And post-processing. <laughs> so why do people use Unity to create VR? Why do game developers use Unity? And the answer is because Unity makes it easy for those people. They make it easy to add interactivity. They make it easy to add input from an Oculus. They make it easy to add input from uh, a Gear VR or all, all across the and that's why people use it, and that's why software developers, and that's why all of the other industries should look at game developers and what they can do for their products to give them that interactivity. So if we look at what game developers have done, this is Zeroite, uh, previously your Technics, which was a game developer, and they turned from game developer to high-end uh, biz sim for car manufacturers. And they create this Audi product where it's the Audi showroom. You go in, you've got the Vive headset, and you can walk around the environment and walk around and see the different models of the cars. And they can touch and they can change and they can use the controllers to change the colours or change the, the like spoiler heights, if you like the fast and furious, I guess. But they can give the person that kind of experience just by going to their showroom. We've got things like the Game of Thrones Ascend the Wall, where you actually go in up up the wall in the north, and the thing's shaking, the people actually grabbing hold of the physical uh, like cage, because it feels like they're going up to the high wall and they can look around. Again, it's promoting the product, and game developers, uh, a game development company made this for the brand, because they wanted to give the person that immersiveness feel of being going up the, the wall. We've got companies like Aardman, one of the most famous animation studios in the world, creating products with Unity that adds real immersiveness. This was a BBC story about uh, Turkish refugees, and everything happens when the player actually looks at that character. It's not just a 360 video, it's not just putting somebody there and they can look around. Things happen when the player looks at that player, so they know that they're affecting what's happening. It's the same with this. It's a, a panoramic animated series called Sequence, and it's made by Aplan. And again, this is a 360 virtual reality uh, animated series where the story adapts in real time to where the player's focus is. And giving the player that kind of input, again, it's not just a 360 video where they can look anywhere and anything will happen. They're actually having input to the series. For research, people are using virtual reality and Unity to make this kind of scientific game where you're going through the human brain and they can and zap things and move around and choose where to go. It's not just that kind of, oh, I'm in this, I'm looking around, that's great, I'm going to take it off again. They're actually having uh, some sort of input. And this was made by a company in Russia, who are an independent game company, and it's on six platforms because of the power of Unity, right? 
Uh, we've got this McDonald's harvester made by the guys who make who make uh, Radio G. Uh, Macro, I think that looks good. Uh, so again, this is the kind of brand building by a company such as McDonald's. Everybody knows who McDonald's are, obviously. And they're still reaching out to as many people as possible to show, hey, we're on the forefront of this technology. We can educate people how to harvest potatoes. And we can, you can actually input real world objects such as a tractor and a tractor steering wheel and then have a two player networked game in VR. It's pretty amazing. So it mixes physical real world components uh, and, and virtual, so they can be anywhere in the world. And then we've got experiences like Tilt Brush, which just gives the player absolutely blank canvas. I give this to my five year old at a point and say, there's one controller, pull the trigger, and then he's off. He's, he can make anything he wants, and it gives that person uh, the freedom to, the creative freedom to make anything off. And then we've got things like this, which is an animated uh, film. And it is just like a 360 video where there's positional tracking as well. But what they've done here is use this little hedgehog. Uh, what's his name? It's Henry. Henry. That's one. So what they've done with Henry is made the human feel empathy for him. So he's playing around where all the blooms are, and obviously he's a hedgehog, he's going to end up popping blooms. And he's going to be sad because he's popped his bloom. And then he looks you in the eye, really sad, and you feel sorry for this little hedgehog when you're like, well, what the fuck, man, you just popped a bloom in your eyes. But you feel empathy for him because he looks you dead in the eye, and Sometimes it can even feel awkward. Like, he's a cute hedgehog, so it's cool, but if you've got like Sam staring at you in VR at the back, like, that's pretty freaky, right? <laughs> so we've even got things like storytelling and giving the player a sense to feel emotion and feel emotion for the thing that's in this real virtual reality. And then the final frontier, right? Space. So NASA are using Unity for their uh, sidekick project. Basically, this guy, uh, he's like the longest serving astronaut at the ISS ever. He wears a HoloLens, he's running a Unity application, and if anything goes wrong on board the ISS, he can be linked to a professional down at Houston, and they can draw pictures that appear on his HoloLens how to fix the actual issue. That kind of immersiveness, that kind of connection with another human being, like thousands and thousands and thousands of miles while he's like floating around the Earth at 10,000 miles an hour, it's pretty insane. And that's what you can do with Unity, and that's what game developers and people who, well, that's why I think so many people should be turning to the game development industry to help them with these issues. And what's really brilliant about the games industry is that people share, people share experience like this and meetups like this. If you go to the automotive industry or the healthcare industry, they've got software developers in a little room, dark, coding away, and they never share what went right, what went wrong. Where in the games industry, we'll come to a meetup like this and we'll say, oh, this was really shit, so we didn't do it, we turned to something else, but that works. And we're really open and free, and that's why our industry has grown so quickly, and that's why VR and AR and, and this kind of uh, community will grow so much quicker because we're sharing everything together. So, yeah, that's me. We'll take questions now, we'll go after. Uh, that's my Twitter hashtag if you want to contact me, or it's joshn at unity3d.com. Thank you very much, and keep on creating.